In the last 20 years, we've seen a truly uh, dramatic change in how lung cancer is treated, uh, especially non-small cell lung cancer. You know, we went from an era of chemotherapy only, uh, regardless of uh, histology, uh, to chemotherapy focused on histology. Uh, at the same time, we uh, learned more about molecular profiles and mutations in such genes as epidermal growth factor and rearrangements in ALK uh, were, were discovered. And of course, now we, we treat patients with EGFR and ALK inhibitors. But really, uh, that left about 85% of patients without an actionable mutation until the last four or five years with the advent of the immune checkpoint inhibitors. With well, these agents, we're seeing you know, about 15 to 20 percent of patients having long-term uh, benefit from these drugs. So uh, it really is, um, uh, you know, a, a new era uh, because, you know, multiple uh, metastatic sites, you know, including brain and, and liver and other places, uh, patients with these uh, very advanced lung cancers are now living a long time. You know, again, uh, a small number, but, but enough that we have great hope. And now uh, research is looking at new combinations. And, and new ways to integrate uh, immunotherapy, targeted therapy, uh, chemotherapy uh, into uh, this paradigm, even, even adding radiotherapy as well. There is uh, a number of recognized driver mutations for non squamous histology that we have successfully targeted over the past decade. For these patients, the outcomes with targeted therapy are quite good and their overall survival has been lengthened significantly. However, at least one third of the patients with non squamous histology harbor KRAS mutations in their tumor. They are recognized as drivers, but not targetable. And also, we have a large uh, number of patients, about 25% of non small cell lung cancer with squamous histology, that do harbor mutations in their tumor, but the driver status of these mutations is still unknown or remains to be ascertained. For these patients, we still are lacking targeted therapies, and there is a need to improve their outcomes. Immunotherapy has uh, been incorporated in our therapeutic armamentarium, improving the outcomes of the patients with non-squamous histologies that have no driver mutations in their tumor. PDL1 testing has become increasingly critical in the management of our patients. Uh, Keynote 010, the phase three trial that showed a benefit for pembrolizumab versus our former standard uh, docetaxel, uh, mandated a minimum uh, IHC expression level of 1% or higher. And it's intriguing if you look at uh, even higher levels, 50% or higher, the uh, uh, survival benefits were more pronounced. Where it's really become absolutely essential is in the frontline setting, and this is based on Keynote 024, which compared single agent pembrolizumab monotherapy to standard platinum based doublets, essentially chemotherapy du jour. And uh, eligibility for that study required a minimum expression level of 50% or higher. And if you look at the overall population of uh, non small cell, that's probably about 25 to 30% of our patients. That trial showed a statistically significant and I'd argue clinically meaningful survival advantage as well as a major response and progression-free survival advantage. I would test everyone for PD-L1. In fact, at Yale, um, we have a reflex PD-L1 test. When I see a patient for the first time, uh, if they've just had a biopsy or surgery, the PD-L1 is there. At the same time, I know whether or not it's squamous or adenocarcinoma. Um, takes a little bit longer to get the uh, next generation uh, sequencing for the EGFR and ALK, but of course th that's important too. But absolutely, PDL1 is critical because uh, a positive PDL1 uh, for a high level, more than 50% of the tumor cells positive, indicates a patient who should get pembrolizumab in the frontline setting as a single agent. Only 20% of the population, but that's the 20% we want to find. Based on the approval of pembrolizumab in frontline therapy for non-small cell lung cancer using PDL1 expression and the overall consistency of the assay across clinical trials, the recommended test for assessment of PDL1 expression is the 22C3 antibody assay. In my opinion, there's no need to reorder um, PDL1 if you've done it uh, in the first line setting, uh, if someone's had chemotherapy or, or another intervening treatment. In fact, the data from Keynote 10 
a trial which I shared actually show that. We actually presented that um, last year at ASCO and updated it at ESMO that, that patients who have uh, biopsies that are either fresh or archival, uh, the results did not change. Uh, we still saw a benefit for the immunotherapy over the, uh, the control chemotherapy, this being in the second line setting. So I would, I would use the old biopsy and only get a new biopsy if there was none available.